Tower blocks across the UK are wrapped in Grenfell style cladding, Grenfell style insulation. 17 months ago, we were promised by Theresa May they would make our home safe. We are still waiting for direct action and leadership. Remove the cladding, remove the insulation, and keep our, war, our homes safe and warm. What the community of North Kent has had to go through, particularly the residents of that tower and the people who saw their friends burn, that should never happen again. And the government have been glacial in their response. They've been too slow, there are too many qualifications and we don't know enough. The Grenfell fire spread through combustible plastics, cladding and insulation. And it was the plastics industry that helped write the rules of unsafe building insulation and silence those who wanted to challenge the safety of plastics insulation. Shame. The biggest plastics company in the UK is also the biggest fracking company. Ineos is fracking not just to burn more gas for energy, but to create more plastic. Only now have they said they will ban combustible cladding. It's a limited ban and it does not apply to existing buildings. Nearly a year after the fire, they offered an estimated 400 million pounds to replace cladding on social housing tower blocks. That did nothing for private blocks, nothing for student residences, nothing for buildings under 18 meters high, nothing for buildings where the cladding is not of ACM, but other kinds of combustible cladding, nothing for hospitals, schools, or workplaces. And now we find that even some social housing residents are being refused funding to remove their cladding. And when it is removed, People are still often left at risk. While buildings are stripped off, naked to the elements, you can freeze inside. They froze inside last winter with the beast from the east. This government's been shamed into giving 400 million to take cladding off buildings. Shamed into it. It's not good enough. The fact of the matter is it should be taken off. After every tragedy that happens in this country, we hear, shouldn't have happened, won't happen again change needs to be done. Well then bloody take that crap off the building and put A1 non-combustible material on there. It's as simple as that. Being warm and safe in your home is not a privilege, it's a necessity. And the Fire Brigade's Union will fight and campaign for legislation and law to be changed. Imagine you were a child on the 13th of June. Imagine you were a child on the 14th of June. And imagine now that you are that same child on the 15th of June because you are not that same child. They have been robbed of their childhood. You get one chance at childhood, and when it's gone, it's gone. And that is why we are here, because our children are our future, but if we're not here in the present, they won't have a future. People like myself, disabled people, none of us are able to react quickly in an emergency, such as when a fire alarm goes off. We end up living where we are placed, in many instances, in high-rise flats. The lift breaks down, you can't use the lift. They are stuck. The same happens with many elderly people. When the Grenfell fire happened, Salford Council and the City Mayor told us clearly that all dangerous cladding would be removed from all affected high-rise blocks as soon as possible. Cladding has now been removed from the lower three floors of each block. Those flats are now wrapped in cold, wet insulation and are set to remain that way through the winter and it doesn't matter how long you leave your heating on, your flat will not get warm. Safe warm homes are the absolute basics of a civilised society and insulation is an essential part of the fight to tackle climate change. One thing many people don't realise is that climate change can lead to more extreme weather in winter too, the likes of the beast from the east that we saw last year. I live in Salford. I had one lady stop me the other day. Since Thursday to the Tuesday, she's paid £39 in electric to keep warm. She's wrapping herself in a blanket. No, it's not cold at the moment. What's it going to be like in the winter? They are petrified. People living in the rest of the 22 floors are still anxious 
about the safety of their homes. Should not teams have been working on every block at the same time so as to make all tenants more secure as quickly as possible, as promised? I'm here representing the 343 owners of properties in Manchester Green Quarter who within weeks will be presented with a bill for cladding remediation works. The facing bills are 20 to £30,000 each. There's no one to help us, no one stepping forward. The builder, Lendlease, a company which made three quarters of a billion dollar profit last year, is thrashing around doing everything it can to get out of paying the three million plus cost. It has now introduced another construction company no one has ever heard of as being responsible for the design and build. This company is now one of two companies left in the running for a 330 million deal to refurbish Manchester Town Hall. This should not be allowed to happen. A couple of weeks ago we had an action outside t uh, City Hall. And we got the uh, people inside City Hall to raise the issue with housing association bosses. Why they weren't sharing their fire risk assessments because there is, these organisations are still not within the remit of the Freedom of Information Act. And they actually sat there and said that they weren't releasing them because the tenants really didn't have the capacity to understand these fire risk assessments. In Southwark there are eight blocks that are deemed to have dangerous cladding. Um, many, many, many of the properties in Southwark do have disrepair. Last year, there's large-scale cracks in the walls of the Lebri Estate. The Tenant Resident Association didn't want to get involved in the issue as they saw it as political. Another group organised that were residents in the Lebri called the Lebri Action Group. The council have chosen to ignore the Lebri Action Group and are now giving favour to the TRA. This is an issue across the whole of the UK. Tenant management funds are being investigated, voices being restricted, people are, prevented, are being prevented from organising and are told that things will be digitalised and moved online. In Harringay, the Labour Council wanted to sell off millions of pounds of social housing. We set up Stop the HDV campaign. We deselected Labour councillors who voted for the policy and we actually won. We stopped the HDV. They wanted to sell the properties off to lend lease. Instead, they're all now going to remain as social housing and obviously watch this space because we're not going to allow that Labour Council to backslide on its promises. This is a letter that over 140 organisations, MPs, trade unions, housing organisations have signed. Some of the key demands in this letter. Number one, the government must fully fund replacement of all flammable cladding and insulation and also other necessary fire safety measures. For private housing, central government must cover the initial costs and then seek to recover the money from landlords, developers and contractors. Student residences must also be covered. Where cladding and insulation has been removed, landlords are still responsible for protecting residents from cold, damp and mould. All residents should be guaranteed that they will not pay more for using extra energy over the winter. Residents' associations must be supported, kept informed and consulted. The standards and practices that led to the Grenfell fire must not go on to cost more lives. Save! Save! Cladding! Cladding! Insulation now! Save! Save! Cladding! Cladding! Insulation!